Hi, I'm Tony Northrop, and for chapter four of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, I'd like to explain to you the relationship between shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and light. They are all connected to each other, and adjusting any one of them can be compensated for by adjusting any other. In other words, if you make the room brighter by raising the lights, you'd have to make your shutter speed faster to compensate for it. It can be pretty complex and it can be really hard to explain in writing. That's why I'm going to walk you through a series of tests with my camera here and this little lab setup that I've made to show you exactly how everything works. What I'd like you to do is to watch this video from start to finish and then set up something similar in your own home. All you need is a dimmer switch. Once you get some hands-on practice with it, it'll start to make more sense. Now, understanding these is important because not understanding them can cause a lot of problems with your photography. Shaky pictures or not getting everything in focus that you want to. And once you get an understanding of it, you'll be able to fix those problems. Noisy pictures too. So let's get started by taking our first picture on totally automatic mode. The mode I'm using now is the program mode, which is P on most cameras, and it lets the camera make all the decisions for you. And if you're ever unsure about the settings or you're giving your camera to somebody who isn't a competent photographer, set it on P mode and it'll take care of everything for you. It's a great way to go when you're feeling a little bit nervous about your photography. However, for those of us who master shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and light, it's a mode that you won't ever want to use because you'll always want to be able to control those conditions. So you can see the camera does just fine. What I'm going to do now is to cut the lights in the room by about half and I'll take another picture. Now as you can see, the exposure didn't really change between those two pictures. The brightness of the picture is exactly the same, and that's because the camera auto-exposed it. It looked at the light in the room and adjusted the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed in order to get a well-exposed picture. However, those had a side effect. As you'll notice, the fan is a little more blurred than it was in the previous picture, and that's because it had to use a longer shutter speed to expose the picture properly with even less light. That's one of the reasons you need to understand these, because you might or might not want that extra blur in there, and you do have total control over it. Now, you also notice that the brightness didn't change, and a lot of people think they can change any one of these settings, and it will adjust the brightness of the picture in automatic mode. It's not true. You can adjust the ISO or the shutter speed or the aperture or the light in the room and the camera is always going to adapt to it. So changing any of one of those won't change your brightness. If you want to change your brightness, use exposure compensation. And on most cameras that's controlled with a dial on the back, though sometimes you need to press an extra button or go into a menu system. So just for an example, I'm going to add a stop of exposure compensation so we can see the difference. As we can see there, the picture did get brighter. It got one stop brighter to be precise because I adjusted the exposure compensation by one stop. Now a stop in photography is a doubling or a halving of the light. If you double the amount of light in a room, you've added one stop of light. If you cut the shutter speed in half, if you go from one two fiftieth of a second to one five hundredth of a second, you've increased the shutter speed by one stop. Now I'm going to move the camera into manual mode. Whereas the ISO aperture and shutter speed were all unlocked so that the camera could adjust any of them when I have it in program mode, in manual mode I can lock down everything and prevent the camera from making any automatic decisions. It gives me complete control. So that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to set it in manual mode and then configure it so that it will expose the picture properly and will take a test shot. What I did there was I set the camera to manual mode, a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second, f2.8 and ISO 6400. Those settings together allowed the camera to expose the picture decently, and you can see that blade of the fan is just about frozen because 1 1,000th of a second is pretty fast. You can also see that the objects in the background, my dad, the cue balls, and my book, they're all pretty well blurred. You'll see in some later pictures those will get sharper and sharper. The first thing I'd like to do is experiment with changing the ISO. ISO, which by the way is not an acronym, you can look it up. ISO is the sensitivity of the camera's sensor. If you increase the ISO from say 100 to 200, 
you're increasing the ISO one stop. And that's doubling the sensitivity of the sensor. The typical usable range goes from about 100 to 6400. So this was at 6400, which is a pretty bright ISO uh, because this room is pretty dim. So I am going to drop it down to 3200 and we'll see the effects. As you can see, the picture got darker. As your ISO gets lower, the camera gets less sensitive, and if you don't let the camera adjust the other elements, the aperture or the shutter speed automatically, then the picture is going to get darker. So let's move the ISO up two more stops to 12,800 and see what the effect is. As you might have guessed, the picture got brighter because we increased the sensitivity of the camera without changing any of the other settings. Now we've been in manual mode where we locked all of the settings except for the one that we were controlling. Now I'm going to switch back to program mode, which will make everything but ISO automatic. And I'm going to take a couple of shots at different ISOs so you can see the effects. You can see here that the camera exposed the picture at 1 350th of a second in f5.6 and it was well exposed. Now I will drop the ISO to 3200. That's dropping it two stops, so the camera will need four times as much light. And as you can see, the picture is still well exposed, but the camera had to change the settings to 1 180th of a second and f4 increasing the amount of light using the other factors. And as you can see, a result of the longer shutter speed, the blades got more blurred. Now I'll drop the ISO way down to ISO 100. And as you can see, because it's in automatic mode, I can change the ISO to anything, and the picture is still properly exposed. But let's take a closer look at those pictures, and we'll see some really important differences. As we get really close to those pictures, we'll see that the pictures at the high ISOs are really what they call noisy. And noise is the digital equivalent of film grain, and it's not pleasant. It's something to always be avoided. Now, if you look at that ISO 100 picture, you can see that it's nice and clean and beautiful. ISO 100 is almost always better than the higher ISOs. But one of the challenges of photography is that when you choose a low ISO, you're going to have to change some of your other settings, such as the shutter speed and aperture as well. Now let's take a look at the shutter speed. You can control the shutter speed by putting your camera into shutter priority mode. On almost all cameras, that's marked by an S. On Canon cameras, though, it's marked by a TV. Now when you put your camera into shutter priority mode, it gives you control over the shutter so you can specify how slow or how fast you want it and the camera will change the other settings for you, most notably the aperture and perhaps the ISO if you have it set to auto ISO, to allow the picture to be exposed properly. You want to use shutter priority mode anytime the speed of the picture is important to you. If there's a moving subject in your picture, you want to switch it to shutter priority mode. So yes, at your kid's basketball game, if you're taking pictures of your dog running or a bird flying, those are all times you want to be in shutter priority mode. So let's take a picture with the default settings in shutter priority mode. So at 1 250th of a second, the fans on that blade are pretty well blurred. Now let's imagine that I wanted to be able to show those fan blades nice and crisp. I'm going to crank that shutter speed even faster. So let's jump up to 1 1,000th of a second. That's better. They look nice and sharp. But what if that isn't the effect you want? What if you want to show motion blur? This is really common if you're shooting a moving car, for example. You've got to get some spin showing in those wheels, and if your shutter is too fast, you're going to freeze too much motion. Intentionally showing blur is one of the tricks and one of the benefits of using shutter speed. So let's drop that down to 1 60th of a second and see the effect. There's that nice blur I wanted. At that speed, the fan blades are a complete blur. Shutter priority gives you a control over just how much motion your pictures show. Uh, there's also motion in your own hands, and if you're hand holding a picture and it's ending up blurry, it's probably what they call uh, camera shake, and you can control that by using shutter priority and specifying a shutter speed that's fast enough for you to handhold. Check chapter four for detailed information about avoiding 
uh, camera shake, chapter 5 as well. Now I will show you what happens when you change the lights. Shutter speed gives you control over the shutter and the camera will not change it. The camera will change the aperture and if you've chosen auto ISO it will change the ISO as well. But it will never ever change the shutter, you have control over that. So I'm going to drop the lights in half and we'll see what the camera does differently. As you can see, when I lowered the lights in the room, the camera compensated for that not by changing the shutter, but by lowering the f-stop number. Choosing a lower f-stop number opens up the aperture, the iris of the camera, letting more light in. It had to do that in order to get the picture properly exposed, but in shutter priority, you control the shutter, the camera controls the aperture. So let's take a deeper look at aperture now. I'll switch the camera into aperture priority mode and take my first picture. I took that first picture at f8, which is a pretty moderate f-stop number. Now one of the things that aperture controls, besides the amount of light that gets in through the iris, is the depth of field. Now there are other factors that influence depth of field as well, and I describe those in chapter 4. but for the sake of this, we're only controlling the aperture. So at f8, I got the objects in the background kind of in focus, but let's say I want them nice and sharp. What I'm going to do is to choose a higher f-stop number. So let's crank that f-stop number up and crank up the background sharpness too. Now at f32, I have enough depth of field that you can read the title of my book in the background. I control the aperture in aperture priority mode. The camera doesn't do it. So let's imagine that I don't want to see the background in focus. Let's imagine I want a nicely blurred background. This is really popular in portraits where having a nice blurred background helps to eliminate any distractions. To do that, I'm going to choose a low f-stop number because a low f-stop number means low background sharpness. Let's crank that down to f28 and take another picture. At f2.8, that book is completely blurred, and even my dad in the middle is pretty blurry. Now you also notice those fan blades got a little more distinct. That's because the camera chose a faster shutter speed because it was using a larger iris, a larger aperture, which let in more light. And that's how aperture works. Now there's one other thing that I'd like to show you, and that's how a flash can control the amount of light in the room totally automatically. So I'll attach a flash to the camera now. Now as you can see the flash had an interesting effect on the fan blades. It kind of froze the motion but then you can still see some blur. When the flash actually fired the imprint of the blades at that current position were burned into the sensor. But because they were moving the rest of the time the shutter was open you see this kind of interesting effect where they're blurred and then frozen almost like a ghost moving into position. It's one of the cool tricks that you can do with flash. Now why might you want to use a flash and add light? Well first you might want front lighting. If the subject is backlit a front light would help fill in any shadows. So check chapter 3 for detailed information about controlling your light. You might also want it because you're not happy with the compromise of ISO aperture and f-stop given the amount of light. If you're forced to use ISO 6400 and you just hate how noisy it is, put a flash on. Add a little light to the room and that'll let you use a lower ISO. If you like this video, I hope you'll check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography. It's more than four hours of video that you can access online just like this built in. You also get access to the Stunning Digital Photography Readers Group on Facebook where you can put your photos up for critique and get feedback from myself and Chelsea and other readers of the book. Click subscribe down below to see more videos like this and visit my Facebook page. There's a link in the description and give that a like so that you can see the new videos and pictures that I post on a regular basis. I also hope you'll click like. Thanks so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at tony at northrop.org.